a really good job that Battery Ten Battery Ten Energy Plus has been doing here for um, the uh, engagement of the young scientists. Uh, also interesting to see that they're not just chemists electrochemists that they are uh, coming from a wide range of, uh, of areas uh, also topics that you might not think are, are necessarily linked like uh, like law and the the arts uh, but happy that you have managed to engage them for the for the battery sector so looking forward what comes out of it um thank you um so now we uh, move on to the uh, to the main uh, part of this uh, excellent seminar uh, and i'm uh, very proud to uh, be the one to introduce uh, christian masquerier uh, Christian is a full professor in chemistry at the University uh, de Picardie Jules Verne in, uh, in Amiens and, uh, in France. Um, his research focuses on the uh, crystal chemistry of uh, solid state electrolyte cerama uh, ceramics and then sodium ion intercalation compounds. Um, he is uh, not uh, only an excellent uh, researcher within the uh, Laboratoire de Reactivité de Chimie des Solides, the LRCS, uh, which is a, a CNRS uh, affiliated research institute. Uh, but he is also uh, devoting uh, a lot of his uh, brain power to uh, coordinating and developing uh, the the landscape uh, in which the research is taking place, and and really um, one of those persons who who is building the the battery community uh, for all of us uh, to enjoy and and to build further upon. So, um, for example, Christian is uh, the current director of the European uh, Alistor. Uh, federative research structure, which brings together 19 institutions uh, across Europe uh, who are performing cross-cutting high-level research in the field of batteries and, and battery materials. Um, he works here together with Deputy Directors Patrick Johansson and uh, Robert Domingo, um, and it forms the basis of, uh, of many of the programs that we uh, will discuss uh, later on. Uh, he's also very active in the French uh, RS2E network, which is headed by uh, Jean-Marie Tarascon and, and Patrice Simon. Um, and uh, the University of uh, Picardie Jouverne and, and Christian in particular uh, is uh, the main coordinator of uh, two of the programs that you already now see on the screen. It's the uh, Erasmus Mundus Master Course uh, Materials for Energy Storage and Conversion, MESC Plus, and uh, the Marie uh, Skodowska Curie PhD co found project uh, Destiny, uh, which is also uh, one of the, the excellent uh, European collaborations to, to promote education. Um, so I'm very happy to give the floor to Christian. Uh, given his research focus, I'm, I'm sure that this presentation will be solid and, and crystal clear. Uh, in case you do have any questions or further uh, things that you want to ask Christian, uh, please use the, the Q&A uh, function in this, in this webinar, leave a question. Uh, there's a short uh, Q&A session after the, the presentation. So uh, if you leave your questions there, then we can uh, kind of address them to Christian. But uh, please, Christian, uh, have the floor and uh, and show us what you have been doing within uh, MESC and, uh, and Destiny. Thank you very much, Walter, uh, for the introduction. Can you hear me well? It's good? Yes. Yeah, OK, good. Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much. Uh, I'm very honored to have this opportunity to, to explain uh, what we have been doing and what we are doing in terms of education in Europe. So thank you very much to you, to Sylvia, and to Christina for the for the invitation. So <clears throat> I will be uh, dividing my, my presentation in three different parts before exposing uh, the Destiny and the MESC projects. I will make a small reminder of what uh, Alistor is, a European network that is indeed uh, at the origin of the, the two projects that I'm going, going to, to present further. Uh, so I will move on to the MESC uh, master course uh, that has been created in 2004, and that is an, an Erasmus Mundus master program. I will explain you the... <clears throat> somehow the scenarios we have been going through because uh, it's already close to 20 years now and there's been a lot of ups and downs in this master course. And then I will move to the Destiny, a Marie Curie PhD coffin program that has started from October, 2021 and which is uh, still running. So MESC program is still running as well. So <clears throat> Alistor is a European uh, research institute that has been uh, created in 2004. And uh, 
we have to recognize uh, the importance of this network in all of what I'm going to present you today. Um, this is this is this was the vision of Jean-Marie Tarascon uh, close to 20 years ago to create uh, this network with uh, important researchers in Europe at that time and groups who went with him to create this uh, new network, completely new uh, European network of excellence. Uh, indeed, uh, Bruno Scrozati, Vladek Vigjorek, Peter Bruce, Petr Novak, Josh Thomas, Alan Chadwick were among the, the main PIs at that time to, to launch this network, funded by EU for five years to, to be created, fully created and funded by EU. Uh, uh, this was created to really <clears throat> to bring a, a new battery momentum in Europe, remember, 20 years ago, and uh, to really uh, foster close collaborations between laboratories. Uh, and I will explain you which kind of collaboration and the way Alisto has been doing these collaborations. But uh, one of the main goals of Alisto and one of the main results of Alisto has been to create uh, very bright uh, generation of young scientists, which were young at that time and which are not that young anymore. But I listed many of the colleagues who have contributed significantly to Alisto, and I hope I don't, I haven't uh, forgotten too many of them. But many people who are very, very well known in the field were really newcomers in 20 years ago in the field of batteries, and so we have seen. Uh, really the blooming of the blooming of many, many scientists and with them, their PhDs, postdocs and collaborators in their respective uh, places. After this uh, European network of excellence, Alistor has been uh, flying by his own wheels. This was the goal actually, the EU wanted to create sustainability in this kind of networks. And uh, Alistor continued very actively with the leadership of Rosa Maria Palacin and uh, Patrice Simon, who were the two directors from 2010 to 2017. And uh, they launched uh, Alistor together with a strong industrial club behind uh, the, the research that was uh, conducted in Alistor. And this industrial club together with the academic members uh, participated into the funding of the Alistor network. Many activities were done in terms of research through uh, and that were exposed twice a year in biannual meetings of two days each. Uh, the network created a lot of knowledge through white papers, some of them being published after in big review journals. And uh, more important even, uh, the fact that Alistor was able then to fund PhDs and postdocs for shared position between two or three laboratories. That means that the students or the postdoc had to, to travel and to collaborate very actively with the two or three groups involved in a given project. But very light funding, very light procedure to get the funding, very efficient. Uh, since then, uh, <clears throat> we are continuing this network and somehow expanding in light with the in line with the, the expansion of the battery activity in Europe. Uh, since January 2018, uh, have been coming with uh, Robert Domingo from uh, Ljubljana in Slovenia and Patrick Johansson from Gothenburg in Sweden, becoming a director, one of the three directors of Alistor. And we have brought many newcomers into the network which participate very actively under the same uh, philosophy, I would say extensive uh, share of uh, research between uh, laboratories and common projects and extensive uh, collaboration towards bigger projects within the EU. So, <clears throat> and within Alistor, uh, two of the, the main activities also which are, are being developed are the, the establishments of strong uh, partnerships into education. And this is what I will present in more details. So education at the master level with the MESC program and education at the doctorate program at the PhD level. And all these partners that you see here are 
actively contributing to many activities of these education programs. I will give several examples later. So related to the, the MESC program, we have to realize that it was indeed created within uh, as a work package of the initial uh, Alistor European uh, Network of Excellence. And this was really the vision of these guys who started the network, Jean-Marie Tarascon, Vladek Bikjorek, and Bruno Crozati in particular. Uh, they decided to self-finance this uh, master course and we call them our guinea pigs of students who were very courageous at that time to start in a master course that didn't exist before. And that required them to travel within seven universities over two years. So some of them you may know, I will not list the ones I know, but I know two or three of them with whom I'm still in, in touch and who have uh, nice positions in industry. This, this was class number one in 2004, class number two in 2005. So these are people we were really proud to, to start a new program with. Uh, but then we, at, that, at the same time in 2005, started the Erasmus Mundus program by the EU. And we heard about that and we decided to run for getting an Erasmus Mundus uh, pedigree, I would say, through the EU. So some of you may know this kind of uh, program in the EU where the European community funds a lot of scholarships towards excellent students coming from all over the world. And uh, before getting these scholarships, we had to apply just to say that, to present and to show that we wanted to build a very detailed program and materials for energy storage and conversion. We tried two times first in May 2004, then in October 2004, and failed to get this Erasmus Mundus uh, Master uh, uh, habilitation. But we indeed succeeded in 2005. And thanks to that, we were able to run uh, four classes, five classes, MESC 3 to MESC 7, until 2010, 2012. These uh, <clears throat> were our first partners in the MESC program, the University of Technology in Warsaw, the University of Paul Sabatier in Toulouse, University de Provence in Marseille, Universitat de Cordoba in Spain, and University Picardie Jules Verne. So we acted as, as a coordinator of this new program that wished to train students in Europe with a very nice mobility scheme already at that time. So this is a, a two years program. And uh, we exposed at that time in 2011, uh, the main particularities of this uh, master course with uh, students coming from all over the world and uh, which had the obligation to travel to our respective universities. We really enjoyed this first series of classes uh, within MESC that were bringing very bright students from all over the world, from 20 to 26 students per class. But then we decided that we wanted to continue on that. And uh, again, it was not that trivial to get the Erasmus Mundus uh, label from the EU. As you know, for European education programs, it is very competitive around 10% of the projects get funded. So to make it, to make MESC better, I would say, we decided to bring a new partners from overseas and in particular Drexel in Philadelphia and uh, the University of Xiamen in China. Together with the even more intense participation of the Alistor network that was growing, and uh, CIC Energy Gune in uh, Vitoria in Spain, who, which you, I guess, you all know very well too. So again, we got this uh, accreditation that, were, that allowed us to run five more classes from class eight to class 12 until 2017. <clears throat> and again, uh, we got a new accreditation by renewing the program, renewing the consortium, and bringing new partners, such as the University of Pais Basco in, uh, in Bilbao, 
and the University of, uh, of Ljubljana in Slovenia, which you know well as well, together with uh, another new partner from overseas, which is uh, the University of Deakin in uh, Melbourne, Australia, with uh, Maria Forsyth as the principal investigator in Jenny Pringle. So this means that we are indeed running this master course right now for the third time, third series of uh, scholarships obtained by the EU. And this means, as you can see, that uh, we should reapply for another accreditation in the future, which we have done. Uh, two weeks ago was the previous deadline for getting an Erasmus Mundus. And Mesk uh, made a proposal uh, that was uh, led by that is led by Professor Alejandro Franco from Amiens. With these new partners, we also included uh, research facilities and uh, <clears throat> like such as the National Institute of Chemistry in uh, in Ljubljana and the CIC in Algigune that possess uh, prototyping units such as the one that we also had in Amiens to train students towards battery technology in the, for the third semester of their master course. The MESC master course is heavily supported by Alistor that provides scholarships as well to the students. And the French RS2 network, which gathers many, many French laboratories, which also supports our master course through scholarships to our students. <clears throat> this is an example of what we did uh, for uh, the last uh, class, for instance, class seven, class 18, just to give an idea of what we can get in terms of numbers. We had a record number of applications of 479 applicants to join our class, our master course, from 59 different countries. So this is possible because being an Erasmus Mundus master course, you get a very high visibility from the EU through the EU portal and uh, international studies. Out of these 479 students, we selected 35 from 20 different countries, which are now taking their classes within MESC. So this is just to say that this is a very competitive master course to get in. And we're very happy about the quality of the students we enroll. Um, so the, <clears throat> the master course offers a pretty unique uh, mobility scheme that we really enjoy and that the students apparently enjoy too. In semester one, the whole class is in Warsaw University of Technology with Professor Victor Grek and his colleagues. In semester two, they all move to France and uh, reach Toulouse, University of Paul Sabatier with Professor Patrick Simon and uh, Professor Patrick Rosier, who are responsible for them in Toulouse for, for year one. Then uh, between year one and year two, some of them go to laboratories in Europe, though it's, it's not mandatory, but they can have some, we help them to get a small internship. And in semester three, we split the class in three different parts, three equal parts, and the students go either in Ljubljana, Bilbao, or Amiens to study specific courses, which are specific to these three different locations. And in semester four, they have to do a master thesis for six months all over Europe or in the USA or in Australia with uh, Deakin and Drexel. So they, we offer them a very nice catalog of uh, master thesis topics that they have to choose from. And we're able to propose close to two PhD, two master thesis topics per student. So they can really choose what they, they want to do in Europe for their master thesis. The <clears throat> master course deals with inorganic chemistry, characterization techniques, electrochemistry, thermodynamics, crystallography, addresses, hydrogen storage, fuel cells, batteries, of course, supercapacitors and nanomaterials. And we have also some trainings on intellectual property and soft skills. As I maybe I, don't, I haven't said, but he's uh, fully taught in English, which is very important, of course. And uh, it is very highly uh, supported and linked to the Alistor and RS2E networks in, in Europe. 
<clears throat> we have had close to 350 graduates, not 335 up to now. And right now uh, we have about 60 students enrolled in the, in the classes. They do uh, <clears throat> their master thesis all over Europe, as I said. And uh, importantly, besides the EU support, we have uh, scholarships that we obtain from industry. In particular, the Yumiko company, which is very, very supportive to our program. And we get also scholarships from the Alisto and Aristoe networks, as I said earlier. And uh, importantly, uh, it is very important to mention that after graduating in MESC, the students mostly go for PhD and for most of them okay, within Europe. Although some of them uh, go back to their home countries or apply for PhDs in the US or in other countries. Right now, and this will be one of my last slides for MESC, uh, right now uh, we have training class number 17. They have uh, made their three semesters of classes and they are now, now all spread all over Europe and in the US and in Australia for their master thesis topics. And they will defend these master thesis topics in September in Amiens. Class 18, uh, we have enrolled the biggest number of students ever in MESC. 34 students have been enrolled in class 18. And they are now doing their semester two for year one in Toulouse after having spent uh, semester one in Warsaw University of Technology. This was a picture taken in the famous uh, theater in Warsaw University of Technology in September 2022. And just to mention also that uh, we are hiring uh, new students for the next class of uh, MESC 19. And the deadline is close to, to be reached because this is uh, 28th of February, 2023. Besides uh, training the students, uh, we are uh, really happy to have created a very big network of alumni within MESC. Basically, all my colleagues and myself, wherever you, we go, wherever, whichever conference we attend, we will meet one of our MESC alumni. So this is really nice to see them growing. Uh, these alumni come from 50 different nationalities. So this is really important for for Europe, for bringing new talents from all over the world. And they work mostly in companies and some of them in academia. So now uh, <clears throat> we realized that uh, training all these master students in, in Europe was very nice, but many of them were asking somehow for subsequent training at the PhD level. And uh, we realized that there were some very nice funding opportunities in Europe. In particular, ETNs, as many of you already know as well, I guess, but also the Marie Curie PhD Coffin program. So <clears throat> thanks to the recommendation of uh, Maria Rosa Palacin from uh, Barcelona, and through the Alistor network again, this, was, this is why Alistor is really powerful in bringing uh, things in Europe, we decided to apply towards the EU to get uh, this funding. As the title says, this is a co-fund. That means that the EU is funding about 60% of the global budget and 40% is uh, funded by partners. So <clears throat> I have to say, and I'm very proud of saying that and happy and that uh, this uh, destiny project was made feasible thanks to the support of many nice colleagues from all over Europe. And in particular, uh, Christina Edström from Battery 2030 Plus, who really helped us and made a very strong support to our application. I'm sure this has played a big role in getting the projects funded. And the project is pretty ambitious, as you can see, because the project is, was to, to hire uh, 50 uh, PhD students within more than 40 partners in 12 different European countries. So I guess you can realize that this is, was very challenging because we have to establish 50 different work contracts with collaboration uh, contracts between these partners and uh, all the things that Battery 2030 Plus is very used to do. But this works and this worked and we have launched Destiny. 
the, these are the, the partners heavily involved in uh, Destiny, 21 universities. So this is really very attractive program for students with and 14 different research centers, research networks in France, in Europe, and in UK as well. And uh, including as well uh, large scale facilities, you know, synchrotrons, neutron diffraction, neutron sources, etc. And as well as an uh, eight companies that participate at different levels of the of this doctorate program. So this is really a big uh, reunion of many uh, forces in Europe to contribute towards uh, education. <clears throat> So the goal, the aims of this uh, network, of this project is to train uh, 50 young level, high level researchers, uh, aiming to become future leaders in the battery fields. Uh, we wish to give to these young scientists the opportunity to, to become part of a very strong community and academic industry network with a triple I approach, international, intersectoral, and interdisciplinary. We wish to contribute to the development of breakthrough technologies for science, industry, and society. Of course, as a doctorate program, we want to develop a high quality training, integrated and sustainable at the European level. And this really helps us to consolidate collaborations between academic laboratories, industry, and generate innovation. So that was really what was the aim of these projects to be launched. The Destiny covers uh, many different aspects of battery research, such as modeling and artificial intelligence, advanced electrochemical analysis and techniques, operando characterization, battery monitoring, smart battery functionalities, crystal chemistry safety, technology transfer and prototyping. And the 50 PhD topics which have been proposed by the network and the companies involved are all within these uh, targeted fields. <clears throat> In terms of uh, concrete things, uh, we have to realize that uh, these people really play a big role in destiny. I'm the coordinator, the coordinator okay, but uh, I'm supported and helped by a very strong uh, super, uh, executive board with many people who you know very well, most of you, I'm sure. They come from academic institutions, they come from companies such as Lumico and BASF, they come from a large scale facility, the ILA in Grenoble, and uh, research laboratories such as the CEA. So, <clears throat> very important, these people I can rely on, I can uh, ask advice to, and uh, very nice to make common decisions with these people from all over Europe. For the record, and after you will have access to this uh, presentation, uh, these are the principal investigators of all the institutions which are partners in Destiny. So these are really the key people who are ready to help, to train, to contribute, and to welcome students involved in the Destiny project at different levels, as uh, PhD advisors, or as professors, as trainers, as many different levels of participation in the project. Of course, to run this program, uh, we have to rely on a very strong administrative team. Uh, Louise, Jamila, Beatrice, Daphne, Sandra, and Anne at different levels and with different roles really helped me a lot in running this project with the students, for the students, and for the partners, very importantly. So this project, maybe I forgot to mention, is uh, coordinated by the CNRS. I am the coordinator, but the responsible institution towards the EU is the CNRS. It's very important to mention. And thanks to this big project, we have been able to attract, to select through a very demanding recruiting process that the Marie Curie allows for. We have been able to select 50 Destiny Fellows from 30 different nationalities. So this is really another level of bringing students from all over the world in Europe, not at the master level in this case, but at the PhD level. 
Yes. So Destiny and the cohort number one has been hired to for PhDs to be started in 2021, October 2021. And uh, here are the, the fellows that have been who have been selected. Importantly is to realize where the students have been selected and hired all over Europe. The project is strongly influenced by French research laboratories. I have to say this is a CNRS project, but you can see that uh, many other European countries are strongly involved. And uh, <clears throat> you can have a more careful read afterwards of the different institutions involved. But uh, we're happy to, to bring new partners, such as uh, Ulish, for instance, Jena, DTU, new partners that were not in Alisto at the beginning and who are now very active partners of Alisto, thanks to this project. This, the 26 awarded fellows uh, for Destiny are uh, coming from 19 different nationalities. We hired nine females and 17 males, and they are from 23 to 31 years old. So again, very diverse audience. The Destiny cohort number two has been hired as well. They started their PhD in 2022, December, October 2022. And again, they are doing their PhD, PhDs all over Europe many of them in France, but also in Slovenia, in Poland, in UK, in Spain. And uh, in this case, for the second cohort, we hired 24 of them from uh, 16 different nationalities. And in this case, we happily acknowledge that we hired 12 females and 12 males in this uh, second cohort of destiny. 26 plus 24 makes 50. So we are very happy. We have our 50 different PhD fellows. So these fellows are spread all over Europe with their PhD advisors. And uh, now we have to run Destiny in terms of training, in terms of events which are organized for their training. The, <clears throat> the Destiny project uh, involves uh, several aspects of training for, on the design of materials and interfaces and the advanced characterization methods and tools on modeling and then and then also more technology more technological part which is from cell to application students have uh, some sort of catalog of trainings to be chosen from and to be completed for getting their destiny training they also have the opportunity to get transferable skills within their training such as personal effectiveness research governance and entrepreneurship and engagement, influence and impact. So this is a, a whole uh, series of uh, opportunities and trainings that we offer to them and for which they have to apply and for which they have to be selected by the Destiny Consortium and by the organizers. At Up to now, up today, uh, we have been able to, to organize several schools and events for them such as uh, technical ones, uh, impedance spectroscopy in uh, Slovenia, in Ljubljana, uh, multi-scale modeling for batteries in, uh, in Amiens, in France, spectroscopies for battery materials in uh, Bordeaux, France, as well as uh, non-technical trainings, such as uh, uh, sensibility to ethics with, uh, within the ethics school, which has been organized for cohort number one already. And uh, specific uh, training organized by Yumiko towards industri industrial sensibilization in Bruxelles, in Belgium. These are being continued. And besides this training, uh, the Destiny students have the opportunity to attend, of course, the first kickoff meeting, a two days meeting shared with Alistair in, uh, in Amia in December 2021. And the kickoff meeting for cohort number two, as well as the progress meeting report for cohort number one that was organized in January 2023 in Bohinj in Slovenia. So the 50 students, minus two or three, were gathered for three days in Bohinj 
where they all had the opportunity to meet each other and then really establish their strong network of Destiny Fellows. So that's what has been done. And uh, just uh, I just want to mention, and this will be the final part of my talk, I just want to mention uh, what will be done in the close future. And that will be open to Destiny Fellows, but as well as other PhD students within the Agistor network. The first uh, training school that will uh, be organized very soon is in early May 2023 in Göteborg, the Chalmers University of Technology, organized by Patrick Johansson, Carolina Cruz, and Robert Domingo on multivalent and metal sulfur battery technologies. So this is already planned, scheduled, and nicely organized. Another one will be dedicated to operandal studies using synchrotron radiation. This will be in uh, the Electra Synchrotron Facility in Italy, organized by Giuliana, Jasper, Diego, Alessandra, Emiliano, Lorenzo, and Antonella, many bright scientists who will train our Destiny Fellows. Another one will be focused on supercapacitors and high power batteries from fundamental to applications with Patrice Simon, Thierry Piroz, many famous researchers in the field of high power and supercapacitors. This will be in Nantes in parallel with uh, the second German French workshop on high power devices. So organized mainly by Thierry Piroz in Nantes. This will be in June, 2023. Another one will be in early July 2023, organized mainly by Philippe Poiseau and Stephen Renault on organic batteries. As you know, this is an important field of batteries towards sustainability. And these guys are also very famous researchers in the field. So basically, uh, you see, I hope I have informed you enough of what the flavor around Destiny and MESC. And I would like to make a few. Uh, Conclusion, concluding remarks and comments. Uh, yes, I can't believe it, but indeed, uh, Alistor will be celebrating its 20 years of activity uh, next year. So I mentioned that this was uh, created as a visionary uh, uh, experience by Jean-Marie Tarascon and uh, many of us. Uh, to cover and what he created. And we have the duty of continuing this. This is very important. And this has expanded. This has uh, moved towards these new projects. And we are very happy and proud of that. <clears throat> Indeed, uh, a lot of uh, scientific interactions have been generated. As you can see now, there are close to 40 partners in the list store. So, and these partners are and are encouraged to build PhD postdoc topics, shared PhD or postdoc topics in a very easy way and light way so that uh, this encourages these interactions. Of course, these people in Alisto have been also together to build many bigger projects, uh, H2020, FP7 projects all over Europe as well as these two education programs that I presented, the MESC Master Course and the Destiny PhD COFET. This has created a lot of friendships and trust between these partners. Many of us know each other very well, and this is, I think, one of the main uh, driving force for committing to running uh, difficult projects because it is very nice to run this project, but this is also difficult. You know, these are European projects, and these are very demanding in terms of reporting, in terms of commitments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And all these colleagues in the network do that for free, and uh, just by their personal commitments. So I want to thank them a lot today again. <clears throat> we have also to mention, and this is very important, that the EU through the Erasmus Mundus program, through the PhD Coffin program, Marie Curie, through many other EITs, uh, funds this activity. It is essential for Europe, but also companies. I mentioned Yumiko, but Solvay also participates, BSF participates, Orono participates, and uh, Total participates to this uh, funding. Research centers and universities have brought a lot and uh, 
I wish also to thank them for their participation and to make this a reality. <clears throat> and uh, my last uh, quote would be that uh, indeed we train uh, and welcome uh, a younger generation of scientists, scientists, uh, researchers, engineers. They have uh, lots of talents. They bring many new things in our respective laboratories. So this is a huge mutual benefit. Uh, we really hope that uh, these uh, kind of networks help them to, to really decide what they want to do in Europe. And uh, we bring many nice opportunities, I think, for this young generation of scientists. So this is all for <clears throat> my presentation. <clears throat> I wish to thank you all for your attention and thank all my partners, the master students, the PhDs and postdocs who are highly dedicated to these uh, programs. And I'm open to questions, of course.